Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. As district attorney, protecting the citizens of this county from criminal violence is one of my biggest jobs. Unfortunately, such protection isn't always possible. We are always on guard, quick to take preventive measures to ensure the safety of everyone. But often, a situation arises that we cannot foresee. A person with no previous criminal record decides to go wrong, and in doing so, commits bodily harm. In a case of this kind, as we are about to see, the remedy can only begin after a victim has paid with his or her life. Is this all right? I told you to stop back there. We're too close. You've got to be able to grab him when he unlocks that door, Maggie. It's too close. He'll see me. Here comes something now. Is that the guy? Yeah. And he's looking right at me. He knows me. You don't know from nothing. Look, he's heading for the door. He'd have said hello if he recognized you. He fired me a week ago. Why would he want to say hello? Why don't you relax? Let's go, Pete. Yeah. Sorry, gentlemen. Store won't be open for business for another 30 minutes. I... A gun? Yeah. And the store is open for us right now. Let's go inside. I'll leave the door open. Okay, mister. I head for the safe. But, but, but we don't have a safe. We don't keep money here. Do you want to head for the safe or do you want to get hurt? All right. All, all, all right. I don't want any trouble. Well, come on. Let's get moving. What's the matter? You nervous? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, I am. Listen, I'll do anything you say. I, I don't want any trouble. Ah, smart boy. Here it is. All right, get it open. Sh sure, sure. It'll only take a minute. Just, just a minute. There. Get the dope, Pete. Yeah. That's all of it now. I, I, I guess you want to tie me up or something? We're going to do more than that, Mr. Deeds. Mrs. Mrs. Fordman, you're crazy or something. What are you doing in here? I tell you, this man recognized me, and I intend to do something about it. You were supposed to stay in the car. Give me that gun. No. No, no, don't do that. I, I won't say anything. I promise I won't say anything. No. You're darn right you won't say anything. You're crazy, Dame. Let's get out of here. Man works ten years getting to be manager of a store. Some trigger happy punk cuts him down with a couple of bullets. Well, there he is, Chief. I suppose there's a family. Yeah. A wife and three kids, according to a lieutenant. The oldest kid is ten. Now I'm gonna get some real enjoyment out of cracking this one. And that goes double, I mean. Did anyone witness the holdup? Yeah. Plenty of gawkers outside now. But nobody was around when it happened. I'll make a canvas of the neighborhood. See if anyone noticed the car near the place at the time of the crime. Spend the whole day if you have to. Okay. Is there a telephone handy? Yeah, right over there. I'll see you later, Chief. District Attorney's Office. 
Miss Miller, I'd like you to make a quick checkup on something. We've had a robbery here. I don't know how much money yet, but whoever did it killed the manager of the place at the same time. I want these people, and I want them fast. So get me a police report on any known hold-up artist who might be in this area. Where are you, Mr. Garrett? The Barlow Supermarket on Grove Street, but I won't be here long. I'm going into headquarters for a ballistics report as soon as they can give it to me. Then I want to make an unofficial call. There's a family in the neighborhood that's suddenly without a father. I'm going to see if I can be of any immediate help to them. Where can I get you, then? I'll call you back in about an hour. What do you get the door locked for? What do you think? If I had my way, we'd blow this town right now. Oh, what for? We got away clean. You're getting jumpy. Why wouldn't I be jumpy? Crazy dame killing a man for a lousy $700. There'll be other jobs. We'll do better. Where is she? Can I fix in her face? It don't fix? Yeah. And it looks real good, baby. Thank you, Lugo. Lugo, I want to tell you something. Yeah, what? I want you to quit calling Don a baby. It's a lot better than what you call it. Never mind what I call it. I'm married to her. Get him. Just because he's married to me, he figures he can call me anything. I'm warning you, Lugo. What's the matter with you anyway? What's wrong with me calling her baby? I don't like it. That's what's wrong. I think I knock it off. Why can't we be happy once in a while? We got money, haven't we? Seven hundred dollars. A lousy $700, and you had to kill a man for it. Might have killed that one for a lot less. He didn't like it because I had to go out for a smoke once in a while. Called me out in front of everybody. I told you I wouldn't go for any shooting. I, I told you that before we started. So you told me. What can you do about it? Well, you killed him with my gun, too. What good did it do for you to carry a gun? You ain't got nerve enough to use it. Oh, let's cut this out and split the money. I can use my half. What are you talking about, your half? I was in on this, wasn't I? Well, yeah, but Pete and me originally figured it 50-50. Who set up this job? Who knew where that safe was? Who knew what time that guy would open up? I don't care what you and Pete figured. We split it across the board three ways. Okay, okay. I just assume you had the dough. Guess you earned it. I'm going to earn more. Next one's going to be the biggest store in the chain. We'll do a lot better than $700 from that market. Turn on the radio, Lugo. Let's have a little music while we divide this money. Yeah. Morning, Miss Miller. Morning, Harrington. Keith, come in yet? Mr. Oz, he's in his office. Good. Morning, Harrington. Hi, Chief. Did you find out anything about that market case? I waited until 9 o'clock last night. I finally turned up a couple of people who think they might have seen the car. A grace of it, but no license number. No, oh, that's not much to go on. Better check and see if any have been reported stolen. I already checked. There ain't one of them models been stolen in three months. Yeah, looks as though we're up against a problem. How about picking up the boys who use that M.O.? Well, the ones we know who use that method of operation aren't working in this area. Not with records. No, we've got to stick with that Suburban for our lead, Harrington. And if they didn't steal it, you wouldn't think crooks would be foolish enough to use their own car, would you? Not unless they're real morons. You know, Harrington, they might have rented that Suburban. Yeah, that's a thought. And when you rent a car, you have to come up with identification. Yeah, you do. Get started on our car rental agency. You take one phone and have Miss Miller take the other. Right away, Chief. fellas ever do when I'm not around? Play cards? Well, what else is there to do when you're not around? And I got most of your husband's money. He can't hang on to money, never could. Whew, there's smoke in here. I open the window. You need a ventilator the way you guys smoke. What do you got in the boxes? I bought myself some new clothes. Oh? I did something else while I was out, too. What? I cased that Grand Street Market. Gabbed with one of the checkers. Just like where I worked, only more volume and a lot more money. 
when do you figure we ought to do it? Why not this week? I, I, I think we ought to wait. It's too soon after the other one. What difference does that make? Well, I, I, I think it's too soon, that's all. If we listened to you, we'd never get anything done. Well, that smoke, I've got to open another window. What do you expect to do, keep on cracking supermarkets every week? Well, we're going to crack this one anyway, and we're going to do it in a couple of days. <laughs> Car Rental Agency? This is the district attorney's office. We'd like to know if your office has rented out a gray suburban in the last few days. You haven't? I see. Well, yes, thanks Carver. anyway. This is the office of the district attorney. We'd like to know if you've rented a gray suburban any time this week. Yeah. All right, I'll wait. That makes 23 for me and still no suburbans. Let's see, the next one will be Sony U Drive, Evergreen 3. Four, four, five, six. I didn't know there were this many car rentals in existence. Uh, me neither. Uh, hello? What's that? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Grace of Bitter. Oh, good, good. And, uh, what was the name? Mrs. Who? Mrs. Donna Fordney. 215 Valencia. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, you say they turn the car back? Okay, thanks very much. You got one. I sure did. Looks like we're in business, Chief. The car rental? Right. Grace of Bourbon was rented day before yesterday to a Mrs. Donna Fordney, lives at 215 Valencia Apartment 5. Yes, Mr. Garrett. Call that address Harrington got, will you? See if they've got a vacancy. Yeah, right away. Valencia Street. That's only five or six blocks from that market. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Did you get a description of the woman? I did. She's a blonde, about 22, medium height and build. Guy said she was plenty good looking. That's your information, Mr. Garrett. The Carlisle Apartments, and they do have a vacancy, a double on the ground floor. Good. Call them back, Miss Miller. Tell them you'll take the apartment uh, for your uncle. Her uncle? Hello, Chief. I ain't that old. <laughs> Set up a stakeout, Harrington. Get to know that blonde. Get to know what she does, where she goes, who her friends are. Find out if she works and where. Find out if her husband works. Talk to the women who live around her. They'll tell you. Try to find out if she's throwing money around. If she is, we'll make an arrest right away. A blonde with money. Sounds like a pretty soft assignment, Harrington. Yeah. Saw up like a thirty-eight caliber bullet. Oh, well, you better watch your step, all right. If that blonde has money, she probably got it because some killer used a gun. And if we get him in a corner, they'll use it again. <laughs> This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the supermarket killer, here's an important message I'd like you to hear. And now back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. The supermarket had been robbed. $700 had been stolen. And the manager of the store had been murdered in cold blood. My office had been able to come up with only one lead. The car used in the holdup was the same type as one rented by a Mrs. Donna Fordney, a young woman who lived in an apartment house near the scene of the crime. We knew she was a blonde and we knew she was good looking, but so are a lot of other girls. And there are plenty of suburbans driving around the city streets. But you do your best with whatever turns up. You try to add to it. So now Harrington was staked out in the apartment next door. Hello. Harrington, Mr. Garrett. Okay, put him on. Hello, Chief. How are you doing? Well, I haven't been able to find out much yet. The girl has a husband, all right. Name's Pete. And there's another guy. Seems to be a family friend. Comes and goes. Can you get acquainted? I'm going to try that now. The husband is there alone. This will be a good test of that course I've been taking. Course? What kind of course? You know... The one on how to make friends and promote people? So long, Chief. I'll check back with you. Yeah? What do you want? Oh, look. Uh, I'm the guy in the next apartment. So what? Oh, I'm going nuts rattling around there alone. Why don't you take a walk? 
Well, I got bum dogs. Uh, look, if you ain't got nothing to do, I thought you might like to, you know, come over and shoot a shot. I'm sorry. I gotta hang around here. We could play some cards. Uh, how about a little rummy? I don't think so. Huh? Suit yourself. But it seems kind of silly, both of us, knocking ourselves out doing nothing. What's the matter? Don't you like cards? I didn't say I didn't like cards. My wife's coming in pretty soon, that's all. Yeah, we'll play till she gets home. Yeah, I guess so. We, uh, we better play in here. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be around when she gets back. Well, that's okay with me. Hey, you've got a nicer apartment than I have. Oh, those big windows. It ain't as good as it looks. We, uh, we get a lot of traffic noise. You want to play for dough? Dough? How much dough? Well, not enough so you get hurt. I'm practically broke. Oh, that's too bad. Why, well, uh, I got a few things coming up. I'll be all right. Here, shuffle them. Hey, yeah. I, uh, I see your wife going and coming. She's a nice looking girl. Probably she knows it. So there are a lot of guys around here. Yeah, I guess that's a problem. Here, cut them. Keeps a man busy all the time. Well, and who's your friend? Never mind my friend. What about yours? Every time you go out lately, you come back with that guy. Now don't get nasty now, Pete. I just met Don on the way in. You just don't pay any attention to warnings, do you, Lugo? What do you want from me? A written invitation? Keep it up, Pete. Keep it up. You're going to give me that dog I once too often. Shut up, both of you. You still haven't told us who your friend is, Pete. He's a guy who lives by himself next door, and if he's smart, he'll keep on living by himself. My, but we're in a bad mood. But I'm not feeling so gay myself, and I'm asking your friend to leave. Now, wait a minute, Donna. You heard me. And I guess we know who pays the rent for this place. Yeah, it's all right, Pete. I'll go. I don't want to make no trouble for anybody. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. You stupid fathead. What's the idea of taking up with a stranger like that? What's wrong with him? He lives right next door to us. Donna's right, Pete. It's dangerous. You keep out of this, Lugo. Why should I keep out of it? Just as much my neck if anything goes wrong. If you want to know something, we aren't waiting around for anything to go wrong. We're cracking that Grand Street Market this afternoon. What? And if you're nervous, you don't need to come along. If you're chicken out now. Don't expect me to come back to you. <laughs> Who's going to chicken out? I'm in this just as much as you are. All right, let's go. Go where? We need a car, don't we? I got the car. Same one. It's out back. Come on. Hello, Chief. You look as though you're holding out against the charms of the blonde without too much trouble. Oh, I could be wrong, though. Isn't that a new tie you're wearing? You better watch it, Harrington. These blondes can turn out to be real femme fatales. Oh, I'm doing all right so far. She's a pip for looks, no kid. She don't like me, though. Ordered me out of their apartment. You mean your car didn't help? Yeah, not a bit. She's got a real cold eye, that's it. Any signs of wealth around? Oh, nothing I could see. Her husband didn't even have enough dough to play gin rummy. Sounds as though the rent in your apartment might turn out to be a waste of the taxpayer's money. Uh... We could pick them up on suspicion. And the smart attorney would have them out within 24 hours. There's still no evidence against them but the car, and that's pretty flimsy. Besides, we could blow the case if we move too fast. They'd come out and transfer their operation to some other spot. We've just got to keep watching and waiting. Well, it ain't a bad apartment. I sure rattle around in it. Stay with them a little longer. Something might turn up. Okay, Chief. This is it. Turn. Turn! There it is. Halfway down the block. We'll go around and back. I still think we'd be better off doing it the way we did before. Each time different. That way we don't take chances. In this alley, Pete. Yeah. Attorney's office. Harrington, Miss Miller. Chief there? Not right now, Harrington. Wait a second. He just came in. Hold on. For you, Mr. Garrett, Harrington. I'll take it right here. Hello, Harrington. We got a bad break, Chief. 
What's that? They blew the coop while I was out front talking to you. Must have gone out the back way. They were all three together. Well, that could mean something, all right. I'll send out an alert. Stay there, Harrington. We'll keep in touch. Miss Miller? Yes, sir? Give me Lieutenant Padre right away. I'll take it to my office. Okay. Not to that arrangement. I'm going with you. Let Pete stay here with the car. Hey, maybe that's a good idea. A man and a woman. Not so suspicious looking. Give me your gun, Pete. You've got to promise not to use it. Give me the gun. Just be ready to move when we get out of here. Come on, Lugo. Get that gun out of sight. Sure, sure. Don't be so jumpy. You're as bad as Pete. Boy, you beat me. I've never seen a dame like you. About the manager's office? Right where you said. About the manager? He's in it. Good. Not many people around either. Here we go. Uh, good afternoon. Close the door, Lugo. I do something for you? Yes, you can, mister. You can open that safe and don't try anything funny. Bradley, quick. No, hold up. He's got an intercom. office. Where's that? Grand Street. All right, I'll tell him at once. Yes, Miss Miller. There's been another holdup, Mr. Garrett. The Barlow supermarket on Grand Street, and they shot the manager. What's that? I'm going out on that, Miss Miller. Alert Harrington right away. This time we might be able to grab that bunch. We're going to have to get out of here. Shut up and get the door open. What are you doing here? Just came over to visit. Found the door unlocked, so I walked in. Well, you can walk right out again. Sure, sure. Wait a second. What's that you got in your hand? The wind was blowing in through the open window. Scattered some papers around. I picked them up for you. <laughs> Give me that. Take a look. It's a money wrapper from the market. You got more of these? Let them alone, Luco. You don't mean no harm. That's what you think. Look. More of them in his pocket. And look at this. A 38 police special. He's a cop. Get over there, you. Shut the door, please. Yeah. Lousy cop sneaking in here. No sneaking to it, Mrs. Fortney. Everything legal. I've got a search warrant on me if you'd like to take a look at it. Keep your hands away from your pockets. What are we going to do with him, Donna? You ain't going to keep him for no pet. You're not going to kill him either, Donna. No more killing. Lugo, you got a gun. If Pete tries anything, you know what to do. You can't get away with killing cops, Donna. Not cops. Just slug him, Donna, and let's get out of here. He's the only one who can identify us. Get my handbag out of the closet, Lugo. Then get ready to blow. You can't beat this thing. You'll be picked up. I'll have to find it first. Got the bag, Lugo? One with the dough. I got it. You're not going to kill him, Donna. You killed enough guys. Don't try to stop me. He's getting it right. All right, drop those guns. That's all for you, sister. Drop it, drop it. You lousy cop. You all right, Harrington? Yeah, I'm fine, Chief. And slugs all went into my apartment next door. But you got here just right. This trigger-happy young lady was just about to give me the works. Crazy dame. She's killed crazy. Maybe you'd like to tell us about it, mister. He can't tell you nothing. He's my husband, and he can't testify against me. No, but Lugo can, and if he don't, I'll lay it all on him. Not on me, you won't. I'm not sitting still for any murder rap. Here's our break, Chief. You're in it with me. Both of you. Right up to your half price haircut. Yeah, I'm in it. But I didn't do them killings, and neither did Lugo. You pulled the trigger both times. You crazy, stubborn dame. All right, let's go. All of you. We'll hear the rest of it downtown. This is David Bryan. I hope you enjoy this case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here. 
here is the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Perhaps you remember the outcome of this case. The jury found Pete and Lugo and the girl we call Donna guilty of murder in the first degree. Society now has collected the penalty for their crime. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord.